when most people think of chemistry, they think of exciting chemical reactions like this one. What you just witnessed is a special kind of reaction we call a combustion reaction, in which oxygen has reacted with a carbon-based compound called butane. Chemists represent reactions like this using a so-called chemical equation. And in fact, here is the chemical equation for the reaction you just witnessed. The chemical species on the left, C4H10, is butane, and of course, O2 is oxygen. For this reaction, these are the so-called reactants. The products of this combustion reaction are carbon dioxide and water, which you see on the right side of the equation after the equal sign. These are the so-called products. Using an equal sign is the most common modern way of representing a chemical equation, although you might sometimes see an arrow or a double arrow in its place. So, a chemist would read this equation this way. Butane plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. Now you'll notice that there are numbers, which we call coefficients, in front of each chemical species, both on the reactant side and the product side. These coefficients are used to balance the chemical reaction. They indicate how many of each species, molecule or ion, participates in the overall reaction. We have to do this because in a chemical reaction the atoms in the reactant species are rearranging into new combinations and it often takes more than one of each species to provide all the atoms needed. For example, in the combustion of butane it wouldn't work to write one butane plus one oxygen produces one CO2 and one water. There are four carbon atoms in butane all of which have to be converted to CO2. And that's going to require a lot more oxygen than just one O2 molecule. The balanced reaction shows how many of each species are needed. So, in practical terms, what does it mean when we say the reaction is balanced? Well, a chemical reaction is balanced when there are the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. Let's check that this is true for this equation we'll start with carbon. Among the reactants, each butane molecule contains four carbon atoms. Since two butane molecules are used in the reaction, there are a total of eight carbon atoms on the left side, that is, the reactant side. On the right side, we see that the only species containing carbon is carbon dioxide. Each carbon dioxide contains one carbon atom, and in the balanced equation, we see eight carbon dioxide molecules. So, on the right side, among the products, are represented eight carbon atoms, which is the same number of carbon atoms that we saw on the reactant side. Therefore, we say the carbon atoms are balanced. Now, let's look at the oxygen atoms. Among the reactants, we see a total of 26 oxygen atoms. That's easy, but let's look at the product. There are two products which contain oxygen atoms, so we have to add them together. From eight carbon dioxide molecules, we get 16 oxygen atoms, and from 10 water molecules, we get 10 oxygen atoms. So the total number of oxygen atoms among products is 8 times 2 plus 10, which is 26. In summary, we have 26 oxygen atoms on the left and 26 on the right, and therefore, the oxygen atoms are also balanced. We can do the same for hydrogen, can't we? In fact, why don't you hit pause right now and check that hydrogen is balanced, that is, that there are the same number of hydrogen atoms on both sides of the equation. Now, writing balanced equations is a fundamental step in most chemistry problems and activities. So let's take some time to learn how to generate not just the chemical equation for the reaction, but the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. Let's start with a simple example. We'll choose another combustion reaction, this time the combustion of methane, which is the natural gas you probably use to heat your home. The formula for methane is CH4. 
The other reactant, of course, in a combustion reaction, is oxygen from the air. And as is common in complete combustion reactions, the products are carbon dioxide and water. So to generate the equation for this reaction, we'll first write the reactants on the left side, put in an equal sign, and then write the products. Okay, that's the easy part. Now how do we balance the reaction? Well, eventually you'll be able to do these steps in your head, but as you begin learning this process, let's do this very systematically. We'll make a list on the left of all the elements in the reactants and how many atoms there are of each. Then on the right we'll do the same thing for the products. We'll start with carbon. To begin with, notice that there is one carbon on the reactant side and one on the product side. So we don't have to adjust the coefficients there at all. Let's move on next to hydrogen. On the reactant side, I have four hydrogen atoms, but on the product side, I have only two. How do I rectify this? I put the coefficient two in front of the water molecule, representing the production of two water molecules, thus doubling the number of atoms of hydrogen in the products. All right, that takes care of hydrogen. Now what about oxygen? I have two oxygen atoms on the reactant side, but now I have a total of four oxygen atoms on the product side. Hmm. I guess if I put a coefficient in front of the oxygen molecule on the reactant side, that would bring the number of oxygen atoms into line. Let's do it. Now I think I have the equation balanced. Let's see. Oh, and by the way, this is a step you need to take every time you balance an equation. Once you think you have it balanced, go back and check every element again. Okay, carbon, one and one. Good. Hydrogen, four and four. Oxygen, four and four. All good. All the elements are balanced, therefore the equation is balanced. Why don't you try to balance a couple of equations yourself, filling in the coefficients? We'll start with an easy one. Just follow the directions on the screen.
Yeah. <laughs> 